We have a great show lined up for you this morning. It is our Independence Day, and today it is all about Nigeria. Today we begin the Independence Day celebration with a discussion on the country's economy, security, governance, national debt, and many more. And joining me to discuss all of these are our esteemed guests, Chief Lawson Amakodian, a financial advisor in the oil and gas, and a former managing director of a Nigerian bank. And we have Kamar Barkin, a partner at a private equity firm here in Nigeria and an investor in many, many sectors. Welcome back, and I want to say thank you to my guests for joining me. As we all know, Nigeria is facing many, many challenges at this point. It is our 57th anniversary. Con uh, congratulations and happy Independence Day. Same here. Happy Independence Day. So, I mean, one of the things, um, I don't know if both of you got to watch the Independence Day broadcast this morning. Well, uh, I've read, I've read, I've read the broadcast. <laughs> Was I've it too early for both of you? I mean, you were on your way here, for, yeah, yeah, on your way here to be yes, with us in the yes, studio. But, so we understand. We're all celebrating Nigeria's independence last night, so. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So it's a, it's a, but yes, you know, it's, we're all caught it started up at midnight. Yeah. You know, independence day started at midnight. We're all caught up, we're all caught yes, up, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So, I mean, one of the things that we know is Nigeria is facing some serious economic challenges. We're technically still, technically out of a recession, practically still in a recession. If you look at some of the, the um, president's address, one of the things he really, he said this morning was that the APC government, which is his government, is really working hard to deliver on their promise. For you as a Nigerian, and this is just sort of, and as a, you know, personally as a Nigerian, how do you feel today, 57 years after independence? Yes, I, I, um, I feel, particularly excited. Mm. Uh, for the first time since the year 2010. And I believe uh, that we, we finally got to a point where we will now say categorically that Nigeria is not only blessed with natural resources, with land, minerals, oil wells, and all that, we are also blessed with good leadership. Mm -hmm. We never had it before, not in a long time. For the first time in so many years, we have a disciplined leadership, mm -hmm. a focused leadership, and a determined leadership. And it gives me a lot of joy. Happy Independence Day, Nigeria. Thank you. And you? Yeah. Um I, I, to be honest, I do. I know it's not a popular sentiment in a sense, particularly in certain quarters. But uh, I, I do have to sort of like echo Chief uh, Mokodion's uh, sentiments around around this. I, I, I do think there is, despite all the cynicism, I, I do think there's quite a bit to be uh, happy about. I mean, like yeah, things are things are tough, but things are tough the world over. Mm. Um, I think the difference is that. You do have a sense of an environment where, you know, leadership is actually trying to do the right thing. Hmm. Um, you might not agree with the pace of it. You might not agree with certain decisions. But uh, I don't think you can argue with the fundamental orientation of th there's been a change in the tone of, 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 of leadership in the country. Um, and it, it gives me optimism. Hmm. Um, I, I don't know. If I've ever felt like this in a very long time wow. uh, about about Nigeria, to be very honest, uh, but that sense that it's really the discussion, the, the 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 debate has moved away from. I wonder how much this person is stealing. To mm -hmm. I wonder what mm -hmm. sort of underhanded deals are going on. The debate has moved to. Am I going to agree with the policy direction i mean is it is it aggressive enough is it not aggressive enough is it is it um you know uh, is it comprehensive enough is it urgent enough you know so it, it's you're having the kind of discussion you have in more civilized parts of the mm. world as opposed to who stole what who is doing what to whom uh, you know what have you you are now talking about oh you know the, the interest rates are not 
you know, sort of like where they should be. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I think they are where they should be. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, exchanges sure. where it should be. I think is where it should be. Uh, the pace of reform is not aggressive enough. Yes, I think it's aggressive enough. You know, policy debates are what we're having, as opposed to very basic, you know, talk about, like, as I said, who is stealing what and doing what sure. to whom and, yeah. and what have you. I mean, this is absolutely not to uh, sort of like whitewash or sweep under the carpet. Serious issues sure. we, we, we have to deal with. We do need to discuss as a country what kind of country we want to have. We do need to discuss the issue of structure sure. of the country, uh, not to, to sort of get on the whole restructuring debate. That, that's not what it's about. But we do need to have certain conversations around how things should be run uh, in, in the country. But generally, we're headed in the right direction, uh, is, my, is my sense. I mean, and uh, we can talk about how fast we should be doing that and so sure. on and so forth. Yeah. Well, that's amazing for both of you to have such positive and optimism. I think that if you read a lot of the, um, if you listen to a lot of the headlines and you listen to some of the headlines from younger people, I think there is a sense that they don't, there is not this overwhelming sense, I mean, not overwhelming, but a sense of optimism. And so this is very exciting that you're, you feel optimistic. And then one of the things you said is about leadership. And one of the things that we continue to hear about the fact that there is a challenge of leadership in Africa, and of course, Nigeria comes up in that conversation because Nigeria is the number one country. So can I ask you, what are some of the things, if you were sort of going to say, specifically when you say disciplined leadership, what are the things that you're seeing in this leadership that is making you much more positive and optimistic? Um, just uh, <clears throat> it's, it's clear for me uh, when, when, when discipline is pervasive. Mm. You see, when you want to steal in a disciplined environment, you mm. hide. Mm. But in, uh, before now, it was open. Mm. If in a disciplined environment, when a federal government makes a promise, it abides by it. Mm -hmm. It says, I will do this, and it goes ahead to implement it. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a situation where in the federal public service, those workers have been eliminated every day. And I, I'm, I'm told those who go to Abu Jawafu mm -hmm. that it is no longer business as usual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that before now, there were ministers, special advisors, who had permanent suites in Nikon Hills mm -hmm. in Abuja. Mm -hmm. It does not exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, you go to your office, you finish your work and go home. Mm -hmm. And there are times where for a, a meeting to hold in, a ministry, in the federal ministry, you spend as much as 15,000 naira per head for lunch. Oh, wow. Uh, the, the finance minister has made sure that doesn't exist anymore. Okay. It was total waste, profligacy, corruption, and total indiscipline. Mm. I believe that this, we, we, we are taking care of those excesses that created so much burden on us as a people. Absolutely. And uh, that, that's what I see. They are, look, it's not, it's it's not, not Eldorado. Perfect. No, it's not yes. Eldorado yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have problems, mm. even now. Of course. Well, as, just as you mentioned, if you talk to a young person, uh, somebody who probably has lost the advantage he had in the past, mm -hmm. in the past, mm -hmm. he will simply will tell you that this government is not doing anything. Mm -hmm. But you and I know that this government is doing a lot. It's doing a lot because it has Gradual, it's gradually taking us out of recession. And recession did not, just, did not come because of the action taken by this government. Mm. It came because of certain, in, of certain excesses mm. that took place before this government came in. It is the responsibility of this government to control the excesses, and it is controlling the excesses. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite optimistic. I do not know why. But I, I'm I, quite, I, I, get, I really get a good sense of like optimism from I'm, you yes, and I'm, positive. I'm quite and, optimistic yeah. and... Uh, I, I, have, I, have, I, mean, I come from a, a new state, for mm. instance, and I see that when the governor talks, it talks sense. Mm. Mm. I, see, I, I see that when, when the governor is initiating a program or putting a, a, an option on the table, he subjects it to qualitative analysis. Sure. And this, this has been lacking. Yeah. And I believe 
Some other states are doing the same. Yeah. Again, not, 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 not to appear to be sort of like, uh, you know, forming like a chairleading section for the government. I mean, but, but, but let's We're be still going to get to that. I yeah. mean, I think no, it's there, okay. there, there's, there are certain <laughs> things that clearly, like, yes. you know, uh, could be handled sure. a, a, lot, a lot better. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, sort of, we talked about the pace of reforms. Uh, we talked about taking, ad taking advantage of uh, an opportunity to, to, to put in place the sort of, like, reforms that are required, mm -hmm. you know, so, like, when we, when, when we didn't, when the sort of public finances were in, like, in, the, in a really bad state and all, all revenues were, were really down, that was a great opportunity mm -hmm. that should have been taken to fix certain leakages and, mm -hmm. and, and wastages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe that wasn't uh, managed quite well. But just directionally, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think we, we, we're heading, we're, we're heading uh, in, in the, right, in, in the mm -hmm. right place. I strongly believe that, yeah. Okay, so one of the, I mean, that's sort of like the first thing that the president said, and I would love for you to sort of get a um, comment on, is um, just in sort of your optimism sort of following on that, which is that, you know, it's, it's a time of reflection, rededication, and remembrance as well. But also really that it is, um, it is, it is a, it's something to celebrate our um, consistent democratic rule, the consistency of the democratic rule, which is like almost kind of what I'm hearing you say, which is sort of what is giving you the, certain, the optimism you have. Let's sort of talk about that a little bit, and I think the level of conversations we're having, the elevation of those conversations. What are, what, what are the next phases of conversations that we need to be having after, now that we are sort of almost well-rooted in our democracy? I think that's an excellent question. I, I do think, like, we, we, need, we, need to have deeper, <clears throat> we need to have deeper policy conversations mm -hmm. across all levels in, in, in this country. So enough of all this, oh, the change, we're not seeing the change. I mean, it, precisely, we need to challenge people to say exactly what do we want to see mm -hmm. that we're not seeing. What is it you don't like about the exchange rate policy? What is it you don't like about the interest policy? What, do you have any problems with the subsidy regimes in place? What do you, how do you think it should look? What is and your overall have view? And people propose their Precisely. Own, so know. not all this sort of like empty noises. Uh, we allow in the public space too much empty noise uh, with, without holding people down and having them talk. Let the, uh, you know, sort of like when government says we're going to do this, ask specific questions, when, how, are you going to actually do this? Uh, when the opposition says, oh, this government is directionless and, and, and whatever, no, it's not enough. Precisely what is it? Do a proper critique and not just say things are hard. But do is that something critique. also too that requires us also making sure that people understand how to almost, um, what is it, um, challenge power, challenge, I think, you know. I think overall it's, it's just the, the tone of our public discussion mm -hmm. and public debate. Mm -hmm. it, it needs to, to be upgraded. That's one. You, the question was, you know, sort of what, what should, yes. what, where should we be taking our, uh, sort of like national discourse? Another thing we need to, 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 to look at very critically is just the pace of implementation mm -hmm. of plans. Sure. You do, we cannot have a policy declaration uh, uh, and a year after we, there is no implementation. Mm -hmm. You cannot say you're going to run like a sort of like a social uh, sort of like transfer program, yep. and a year later there is no concrete plan in place. That that should not, you know. We, we need to discuss capacity, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 and, and timelines and, and sort of like specific milestones, uh, and, and not just have this sort of airy fairy uh, uh, sort of like uh, pronouncements. Uh, and I think that's where we need to take take it next. So in, in sort of saying that, one of the things the president says is that um, the recent calls on restructuring, quite proper in a legitimate debate, has let in highly, has let in highly ir irresponsible groups to call for this, this memorment of the country. We cannot and will not allow such advocacy. As a young army officer, he sort of goes into his experience with Biafra. Yeah, before, before the Civil War. Yes, before the Civil War. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe that this is the way forward, where should we go from here? Yes. Is it fundamentally, when a federal budget mm -hmm. is passed in June, in the heart of the rainy season, mm -hmm. nothing happens until September. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that has to change. Mm -hmm. The government should be able to take the budget to the National Assembly as early as October of the previous year, yeah. such that by January, 
the House of Assembly, the uh, House of Representatives, and the Senate, they have been able to study the budget and they have passed it. Mm -hmm. And so, by by mid January of the year in question, or by end of January, the president signs that bill mm -hmm. into law. And so we have a budget. Mm -hmm. So we will therefore make use of two dry season sessions, that January to May, yes. and then October to December. Mm -hmm. If we do that, the country will transform. That is something that we must cure. Mm -hmm. To me, I also believe that we need to rebalance the federation. Mm. The, the president made, made mention of uh, the, the irresponsible uh, agitation yes, that right. has yes. uh, come on the heel of the restructuring debates. Yeah, he was talking essentially about uh, uh, IPOP, the independent people of Biafra, by the Enam uh, Kano. A lot of people call him a rascal, some call him maybe their, uh, their idol. Because some people were, they were kissing <laughs> One his feet. One man's medicine is another man's poison. They were, yeah, they were kissing his feet. <laughs> but to me, he, he was misguided. Mm. And the, the step the federal government took was totally correct. <laughs> and uh, the, by, by, by sending to, to the southeastern states yes. uh, a dance, a typical type of dance, very special, the Python dance, military war games. So well, that's, uh, anyway, that is me. <laughs> and uh, for, then for prescribing IPO. Mm. IPO needs to have been prescribed because, look, you cannot, you cannot So what's again, sir? Sorry so we are going this. there, what, the, to, to restructure yes. now, is what do we need? What do, uh, people say restructuring means so many things to so many sure. people, but it's essentially the same thing. People want power to be devolved. Okay. People want uh, to, the people want uh, the police force mm. to be decentralized, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not just one IG in Abuja controlling 36 uh, police commissioners. Sure. It doesn't work. And if the state governor has no right to give instructions to the police commissioner, no, we need to do something about it. We also need to look at fiscal federalism to an extent. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying take all the resources and share it at the state level and give the federal government nothing. And they are setting, they are setting, they are setting provisions in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the residual list, mm -hmm. you see. And that should, that there are certain provisions that the government has in its exclusive list that should go to a residual list. And therefore, the federal government, the, ex the exclusive list should reduce considerably. Mm -hmm. And I also believe, as we talk about structuring, yes. the, the, the responsibilities and obligations of states okay. to the citizens should so, become justice. So, what we're going to do is we're yes. going to take a quick break, yes. and the issue of restructuring actually is going to lead us into some of the issues around the economy. And so when we come back, we're going to talk about the agriculture economy, the manufacturing economy, and what the government says they're doing about that. We'll take a quick short break, and we'll be right back. Please stay with us.